How's it going YouTube? Now, whether you're a returning misweaver just wanting to brush up on the basics or someone who saw how broken we're gonna be in 10.2, welcome to the channel nonetheless. My name is LB Ninja 7 your resident misweaver monk, and today we're gonna go over the basics, a beginner's guide to jumping right in to Mythic Plus as misweaver. So first up, I have two builds for you guys. They're gonna be linked down in the description or the, the copy paste is. Now this one, this first one is a beginner's build. This is the one that I recommend if you're just starting. It has more passive talents. Uh, you have only one defensive to worry about. You don't have Zen Pulse or Healing Elixir. And then I have my other, my main, your best Mythic Plus uh, talent build where it actually does have those talents taken. But let's go and jump into the basics. So as a Mistweaver, what makes you unique is that you actually do a lot of your healing through your damage. And you do that by two talents. Ancient Teachings is a buff that you apply to yourself after casting Essence Font or Feline Stomp. 99% of the time it's Feline Stomp. And for the next 15 seconds, your single target three damaging buttons will heal your allies nearby you. Now, since it splits that healing among anyone who needs healing, it will do light amounts of healing to each person. So it's great for upkeeping healing and uh, just sustaining minor amounts of damage. Next up is Awaken Feline. This actually makes your spinning crane kick. So your fourth damaging rotation ability, spinning crane kick, it will now heal uh, based on the damage it does. So this is excellent for AOE healing or healing in AoE packs. Now, this is not all that Feline does. Feline does a ton of things. It makes your Tiger Palms, which is your base uh, single target ability, it makes them strike twice. It makes, like I said, your Spinning Crane Kicks heal. It makes your Blackout Kicks, which is kind of like your secondary single target option. Now it makes it cleave onto three targets. And your biggest hitting single target ability, Rising Sun Kick, it now gives your Blackout Kicks a further chance to reset that cooldown. So you always, always, always want to be fighting on your Feyline, especially in Mythic Plus. So I've briefly talked about these spells, but Rising Sun Kick is your main single target ability. It does the most damage. It is on like a roughly 10 second cooldown but it is your biggest single target hit. So you wanna press this on cooldown, especially if you're on three or less targets. Next up is Blackout Kick. This is that secondary ability. It is on a very short cooldown, but it is on a cooldown, so you can't just spam it, but it has a chance to reset the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick. So you can press this ability to fish for Rising Sun Kick resets. And then next up is Tiger Palm. This is a very minor, light hitting single target ability. However, it does have an extra benefit like the other spells do. When you Tiger Palm, your next Blackout Kick will hit an additional time. So this is a great way if you're just trying to get that Rising Sun Kick reset. So if I Rising Sun Kick and then I Blackout Kick, I get the reset because I'm lucky. But let's do it again. If I don't get the reset, then I Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Fishing for that reset. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. I don't get it. So I can Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. And that's kind of what the single, the two target and the three target rotation looks like. You just Rising Sun Kick on cooldown and then you just alternate Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick until you get that reset. But that's why Tiger Palm is in that rotation because it stacks up your next Blackout Kick. Now that also stacks on top of Ancient Concordance, the talent with your Fey line that makes your Blackout Kicks hit three or more targets. So that's why in three or lower targets, your single target rotation, that Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, those three abilities are bread and butter and your go-to for three target cleave. Because if you're on your Fey line now, all of a sudden, our Tiger Palms are hitting twice. That's giving us two stacks of our Ancient Teachings. And then our Blackout Kick is just gonna cleave and hit 12 times. So that is what makes them so powerful in these small pool environments and how much healing you can get from your Ancient Teachings. If we apply Ancient Teachings, the one that makes our, our single target abilities heal allies near us, then we're gonna get a lot of healing when we do this single target rotation. Now, what does a big pool look like? So four or more targets, the most ideal way to do damage is just by spamming spinning crane kick. At four plus targets, the, the damage that you'll do with just spamming your spinning crane kick, which is your fourth damaging ability, and that's it. Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, and Spinning Crane Kick. 
but four plus targets you just you simply just spam spinning crane kick i mean it's just so much damage and if you're on your fey line you will get a lot of damage. Now, I've already kind of talked about just how important Feyline is or how important it is to stand on your Feyline, but they have kind of given you some grace. If you move off of your Feyline, you have eight seconds of all the buffs that it gives. Um, but, but there is one thing that's very important to remember. Feyline, you actually, every spell that you cast while on your Feyline has a chance to reset that cooldown. Just like Rising Sun Kick resets the cooldown of Blackout Kick, your Feyline Stomp, any spell you cast has a 6% chance to reset that cooldown. But there is one spell that if you're in a panic scenario, like say that you are, you're, you, you're about to kill this pack and your tank's about to move on to the next pack and, and you don't get that reset from your spinning crane kicks, what spell should you cast to try and guarantee a Feyline reset? That is simply this talent here. Chi burst. It it kind of is coded weird. Every enemy and ally that it it's it passes through, it gets a bonus chance, or it basically procs one more time to reset your fey line. So if I fey line and then I, I shoot a chi burst through a bunch of allies and enemies, I'll get the highest chance to get that fey line reset. You saw it didn't reset when it passed through these guys, but once it passed through these guys, it did give me the reset. So that's just a little tip that should help you in keeping your fey line uptime even higher. But I've gone over the basic rotation, you know, all four of your damaging abilities, That that is your basic rotation. But what do we do when we don't care about damage? What if everyone's taking damage and we need to heal? Well, first off, if it's minor damage, those rotations should be enough. You need to learn to trust in your Fey line, trust in your spinning crane kick, because it does a surprising amount of healing. But I understand there are big slams of damage, boss damage that will come at you. What are your cooldowns? What's your rotation look like for cooldown rotations? You do have revival, but it's funnily enough, although it's your biggest ability, it's kind of your weakest of your cooldowns. You kind of save this for panic scenarios. However, what's really good is you have two major, super powerful cooldowns that are on very short timers or recharges or cooldowns that you can cycle between in those damage instances. And that is Chiji, the Red Crane, and Shailun's Gift. Now, Shailun's Gift, since I've, I've given this talent tree, on both talent trees, you take Veil of Pride. That reduces the amount of time for Shailun's Gift uh, to recharge. So as you see here, I have zero stacks of Shailun's Gift. There would be a number right here. But if I get into combat, I'll start spawning these Clouds of Mist all over the arena. You can't see it, but there's one right there. And the longer you're in combat, the more these will spawn. And then if you cast your Shailun's Gift, it'll consume all of those Clouds of Mist and heal based on how many stacks or how many Clouds of Mist you consume. So see here, it can stack up to 10 times. We have eight, we just hit nine. And if we hit 10, we just wait another four seconds. We hit 10, we cast Shailun's Gift. It consumes them all and you see that massive amount of healing, 284,000 healing on all five targets. So that is your shortest cooldown, your 40 second major cooldown in Shailun's Gift. You wanna press this often. As soon as you get to about eight to 10 stacks, sometimes seven or six stacks, you wanna press this if there's any amount of healing that needs to be done at all. And uh, this is just your biggest instant top your group up ability and it's such a short cooldown you want to make sure that you're used to casting this in panic scenarios or, or whenever you need to next up your final ability is your hardest one chiji so i'll try to explain it however i do have a weak aura that i'm going to link in the description below that should help you out with your chiji so you see here it's it's these two red things well, so what's gonna happen when you summon Chiji or you press this button, you're gonna spawn a little red crane to fight alongside you and it's gonna help out the healing a lot. So whenever you do one of your damaging kicks, that being rising sun kick, blackout kick, and spinning crane kick, you're actually gonna kick up two little spot heals on two allies that need healing and, uh, and that will scale with your mastery. You see there, it kicks up a gust of mist and that is what our mastery is called. And notice that this healing number, it says healing the primary target for 8794. Notice that it's the same exact number that shows on the tooltip for Chiji. So it's just going to mirror one of your mastery procs 
onto your allies, and it's just a spot heal. That's all your mastery is. However, since it's kicking up two for every kick that you do, you can really get a lot of mastery procs here. So if I have Chiji out and I'm standing on my Feyline making my blackout kicks cleave on three targets, and I have a fully stacked blackout kick, so I've tiger palmed and have three stacks of my tiger palms. So let's go ahead and do that. So we stack up three tiger palms, one, two, three, and then I summon my Feyline. So I stand on my Feyline, and then I summon Chiji. If I, if I blackout kick, it hits 12 times, but it's gonna kick up two times that amount of mastery procs. So it's gonna kick up 24 mastery procs. So you can get a ton of healing right once you summon Chiji. The number one tip for mastering Chiji, although it's a pretty difficult rotation or difficult ability to master, the number one tip is to get those Tiger Palm stacks before you summon Chiji. And the best way to do that is, yes, I said to Tiger Palm three times. However, if you're on your Fey line, notice that your Tiger Palms hit twice. So you really only have to press Tiger Palm twice and then you summon Chiji, and then that first blackout kick is gonna cleave three targets four times each and do so much healing, not just with ancient teachings, but with those mastery procs. So let's get back to Chiji. So every time you kick, you're kicking up two gusts of mist or two mastery procs to heal. And then you also gain a stack that reduces the cost, the mana cost, and the cast time of your next enveloping mist. So let me get out of combat and then I'll show you guys the weak aura once again. So you see here, this is the duration that we have Chiji out for. So if you're taking the one minute Chiji talent, you're gonna have them out for 50, for 12 seconds, but this is the stack counter. This is how many stacks you have, how many kicks you've done to, to charge up your next enveloping mist. If you have three stacks, your next enveloping mist will be free, mana free, and it will be instant cast. If you have two stacks, it's still extremely efficient, but you will have to make sure you're not moving around. So you have to plant and cast it for just a split second. And then if you have one stack, it will be slightly reduced in mana cost and it will be slightly faster to cast. So it's just adding efficiency to your enveloping mists. So there's basically three rotations that you wanna get used to when, when Chiji is out. The first one being, if there are a ton of enemies, like 10 plus enemies, and you don't really need an extreme amount of healing and you don't care about those mastery procs or, or your enveloping mist that much, you can still just summon Chiji and spinning crane kick. And remember that each kick, including spinning crane kick, will give you two mastery procs and give you one stack of TG. So every three spinning, spinning crane kicks, you're gonna get a free instant cast enveloping mist with Chiji out. Now that's on big AOE packs where you're not really trying to optimize your, your rotation while Chiji's out. You just care about damage and a little bit of healing. But if you're on medium sized packs while Chiji's out, you wanna once again stack up your Tiger Palms before you summon Chiji, and then you wanna prioritize your blackout kick. So there's two different rotations. If you need immediate healing, then that means like everyone's taking a lot of damage and you really wanna maximize how much healing you do while Chiji's out, then you want to do a Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist rotation. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist. So what this is accomplishing is your Tiger Palms are gonna hit twice if you're on your Feyline. Tiger Palm, and then your next Blackout Kick is gonna cleave and hit a ton of times, fully stacking your Chiji, making your next Enveloping Mist completely free, completely instant cast. So Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist. That's if you need to maximize your instant healing. However, if everyone's kind of topped up, if, if your initial right once you summon Chiji, so you summon Chiji, and then you blackout kick once, and all those mastery procs do instantly top up your group, and everyone's not really taking life-threatening damage, then you can Enveloping Mist, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist, Blackout Kick. You can just do that. You can just alternate Enveloping Mist, Blackout Kick. If you have three targets to hit, then those Enveloping Mist will, or those Blackout Kicks will cleave onto all three of those targets, giving you three stacks of Chiji and uh, making your Enveloping Mist instant cast. So you can Blackout Kick and then instant cast an Enveloping Mist, then Blackout Kick, then instant cast an Enveloping Mist. But that, the what that's accomplishing is that's just going to ensure 
that while Chi Ji is out, you can coat your entire party with an enveloping mist. Now, why would we care about coating the entire party with enveloping mist? Well, enveloping mist will boost the amount of healing that they receive. So since they don't necessarily need that healing in this scenario immediately, it's gonna set up your ramp or your Chi Ji to kind of have lasting effects after the, the Chi Ji has expired. So you can just have that healing bonus on everyone and uh, get a lot more healing, not just during your Chi Ji window, but outside of the Chi Ji window, just helping your healing in the long run. But like I said, weaving in those Tiger Palms will give you so much more immediate healing because those Blackout Kicks are gonna cleave and each of those Blackout Kicks are gonna give you more mastery procs and so much more healing. Now, some added synergy comes in when you look at what Essence Font does. Now, we don't necessarily press Essence Font at all in Mythic Plus. However, Feyline, when you shoot it out, it's gonna apply an Essence Font hot, the small, tiny little hot, to everyone that it passes through. So if I Feyline Stomp, through these ally dummies you see there, there's a tiny little essence font hot ticking on all of them. Now, why is that important? And it's that very last little line of essence font. It says your gust of mists or your masteries, your mastery procs will heal affected targets twice. So it's not necessary, it's not required to shoot essence font through all of your allies because say your hunters here and your, your mage is here and your warlock's here, it's gonna be pretty impossible to shoot a feyline that way, then shoot a feyline that way, and then shoot a feyline that way. It's just not required. However, what you can guarantee do before you summon Chi Ji, you wanna stack your tiger palms and then say that this is our tank. We have our tiger palms stacked. We can shoot our feyline through one of the ranged and then that way they have the essence fonts uh, and then our tank has the essence font. And then when we summon Chi Ji, that first blackout kick will summon 24 mastery procs. And if those mastery procs do decide to hit either the, the Sham, or I'm sorry, what did I say? The warlock or the tank, then they'll hit them twice. So in an ideal scenario, if you have essence font on all five members of your party and you have your tiger palm stacked, before you summon Chi Ji and you're on your Fey line and you have three plus targets to hit, right once you summon Chi Ji and you blackout kick, it's gonna hit 12 times. That's gonna kick up 24 mastery procs and those are gonna be doubled if they hit an essence font target. So you can get up to 48 mastery procs instantly. That will top up the whole five man party from about half health or, or even lower to full health because that is so much burst healing and then just the icing on the cake your chi ji when you summon it if you take this talent celestial harmony it's going to apply a chi cocoon or basically a shield to the five targets nearby you so if you summon chi ji everyone you'll see here gets a massive shield and that's just an added bonus that lets you kind of let your your group if you're taking ticking damage you can let them take one little tick and then apply those chi cocoons to kind of pad their health bar and give you your your big smack of a heal right once you summon chi ji and get that first blackout kick off it'll give that healing something to heal or it can extend your health bars. If you know that your whole group is about to take a one shot of damage, you can pop your Chi Ji, give yourself, your, your group, a 100k shield and just allow yourself to survive a larger hit. But that's enough about Chi Ji. Let's talk about our spot healing. What if our Feyline and our spinning crane kicks and our, our tiger palms, blackout kicks, rising sun kicks, what if that's not enough? What if ancient teachings and Feyline just aren't cutting it and you need to either spot heal your ally or you don't have any of your cooldowns available and you need to do some big, heavy, cleaving, instant healing, what do you do? Well, we actually have a lot of synergy there. So we have Renewing Mist, which is what these two charges are here. If I apply that hot, it lasts for 20 seconds and it bounces to anyone that needs healing. So since I'm full health, it'll bounce to one of these guys because they need healing. And we have two charges of that. So we can have a lot of these out at a time. We also can apply Renewing Mists through this talent here. This is like our best talent, Rapid Diffusion. Our Rising Sun Kicks will apply a short lasting Renewing Mist to an ally. 
and our enveloping mist will apply a short lasting and uh, renewing mist to an ally so that's really good during your chi g windows those short chi g windows if you're optimizing your enveloping mists like if you're blackout kick enveloping mist you're gonna get a lot of free renewing mists out for free just for free and then all of that comes together with this talent here this is on our bottom row of talent so it's got to be good and yes it is it's rising mist our rising sun kicks will kick up a small heal to everyone, but the best part about this ability is that it will extend our hots. It'll extend them for four seconds each. So if I apply an enveloping mist, which is a short but very strong hot to myself, and then I, if, if I rising sun kick, you'll see that hot duration, it'll just jump up because it just extends all of your hots. So every time that you rising sun kick, if you have Feyline, shoot through your allies, and you rising sun kick it's going to extend those essence fonts on them during your chi window if you get some rising sun kicks off it'll extend all of your renewing mist and, and, and enveloping mists so why do you want to extend these hot what what makes that so important it's this talent here invigorating mist what this does is it says that your vivify which is your spot heal single target ability will heal all of your allies that have a renewing mist on them so if I Vivify, which is your spot heal, if I just cast Vivify, it's going to do a big chunk heal to myself, so 9,000 healing. However, if we have a Renewing Mist on these target dummies, so I have Renewing Mist on those dummies, and then I, I spot heal myself with Vivify, you see it's also cleaving onto them with Invigorating Mist. So you can spread, you'll just get free renewing mist on your whole party through all of your rising sun kicks. And then if you really need to do some AOE healing, you can just spam vivify. Now you don't want to hard cast vivify like I'm doing right here because it's slow, it's not good. What you can do is now we're going to talk about soothing mist. Soothing mist is a really cool spell where we basically just tether ourselves to an ally. It's a hot itself. But what makes it really powerful is that it allows you to cast your, your vivifies and your enveloping mists for, for no cast time at all while you're channeling your soothing mist. So if I channel soothing mist on this target dummy, I can just spam vivifies and now all of a sudden I'm cleaving vivifies off of him very quickly. So if I have a renewing mist on that guy, a renewing mist on that guy, and then I'm just spamming vivifies on a third guy, all of a sudden you see massive chunky heals on all your allies. So you can really utilize that in panic scenarios. So if you're just in a pack and you're starting to fall behind on the healing, but you've been casting rising sun kick pretty frequently, you see there, I have a couple of renewing mists for free. And then if I just pick a dummy and spam vivifies into it, I'll get a lot of healing from that. And then let's take this one step further. Say that your tank who has a ton of health is just taking a pounding. Maybe there's just a bunch of enemies hitting them or they have a dot that is just vicious on them. Then how do you single target do the most spot healing? Well, like I said, when you channel your Soothing Mist, it's not just Vivify that you can cast. It's also Enveloping Mist. So what you wanna do is you wanna channel your Soothing Mist and then cast an Enveloping Mist and then spam Vivify onto them. What are you accomplishing? Why do you need to squeeze in that Enveloping Mist? Well, first off, it's just a very powerful hot. You read here, it's tooltip, gives you a lot of healing for the next seven seconds. But what else does it do? It says that it increases the healing that they receive from your other spells by 40%. So if you start your Soothing Mist uh, cast with a, an Enveloping Mist and then spam your Vivifies, you're going to get so much more value from that uh, in your spot healing scenarios. All right, so that is your basic rotations, your AoE healing, all of your, your damage rotations done, your spot healing. But let's go and talk about one more thing that I know a lot of new players ask. Thunder Focus T. What this spell is, it's a 30 second cooldown. You consume the T and then it'll buff one of your next spells. So what do you use this on? Well, for starters, if you're just starting to play the game and you're in Mythic Plus, you always, always, always want to buff your Rising Sun Kick. Now, that's if you're using this beginner build. 
What it'll accomplish is if you buff your Rising Sun Kick, it'll just basically reset the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick. It, it reduces it by nine seconds. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna chan, I'm gonna consume my Thunder Focus T, and then I'm gonna cast Rising Sun Kick on one of these dummies. So if I consume a Thunder Focus T, now you see on my cursor, my little mouse here, my next ability will be buffed if I use one of the Thunder Focus T buttons. If I Rising Sun Kick, you see that timer is so short that you can basically Rising Sun Kick do any other ability and then Rising Sun Kick once again. And if you remember, that just equals more free Renewing Mists. That'll extend all of your HOTs, and let's be real, it's our best single target damaging option. So that's how you want to use it in almost every scenario if you're using this beginner's build. However, if you've evolved to the, the main Mythic Plus build, you want to use it on your enveloping mists. So if I'm running up to a pack and my, my tank has pulled the pack, say that in this scenario I'm the tank just since I'll be close, you want to Thunder Focus T, Enveloping Mist yourself, that makes it instant cast. And then the reason why you do that is you're going to Zen Pulse your, your, your tank next. So what does that accomplish? Well, if you're using this build, your Zen Pulse, if you target an ally, it just does a, a nice pulse of damage around them. It's a small amount. However, if you do Echoing Reverberation, the talent right underneath, which I've included in this build, if that target, if your ally has an enveloping mist on them, it'll almost double the amount of damage that this does. So it's it all of a sudden becomes a very powerful AOE damage option that you can press every 30 seconds. If you don't have Zen Pulse available, then still your best option is to thun is to rising sun kick for the same reason as before. But those are basically in Mythic Plus the only two uses of Thunder Focus T that you have. Enveloping Mist to set up a quicker big slam of Zen Pulse on AOE damage, or Rising Sun Kick resets for bigger bursts of single target damage. And guys, that's gonna do it for all the talents that the main build, the only thing left is our stat priority, and it's kind of all over the place in Mythic Plus, because as you know, we get a lot of mastery value from our Chigi ramps. We get a lot of haste and, and verse and crit from our damage and healing alone. So we basically get a lot of value from all stats in Mythic Plus. However, if you're just starting, just gearing up, getting ready for 10.2, I recommend maximizing your haste first. So getting it around 30%, this will just let you react faster, get a lot more spells off and just do more damage and healing. And then after that, it's kind of your choice. If you wanna be tankier, take versatility, it'll add more damage, which will then add more healing through. It scales off your mastery procs, it scales your ancient teachings, your fey line, all of that. Crit also adds a lot of damage and healing. And then mastery just adds a lot, a huge amount of burst healing in those GG windows. So basically max your haste. And then from there, they're kind of all equal. It's up to you how you wanna play it. If you wanna push super high keys, go verse. If not, I would say go crit and then verse and then mastery. But other than that, that is all of the basics that you need to jump into Mythic Plus and start gearing out your Mist Weavers for 10.1.7. 10.2 is right around the corner, just about three weeks away. So you don't have much time. So I hope that this gave you everything that you need to know in the meantime. But guys, there is a 10.2 guide coming as soon as all the buffs and nerfs are finalized. But good luck in gearing your Mist Weaver. I hope that this helped. Comment below if you learned something, if you didn't know any interactions, or if you, there's something that you think new players should know that I did not mention in this video. But guys, my name's Elbin Ninja 7 Shout out to the Patreons for helping this channel become what it is today and for helping me keep my videos slightly shorter. So shout out to these guys. If you wanna see your name on the screen alongside them, then make sure and check out my Patreon link down in the description below where you, you will also find all of the weak ores and builds from today's video. But guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope it helped you. If it did, make sure and like this video and if you want to see more of me, see my, my future guide videos and learn Mistweaver alongside myself, then make sure and subscribe because there's a lot more content coming your way, especially for 10.2. I'm super stoked. But that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.